so if you're writing a simulation and you need to imagine what like a flock of birds or a bunch of fish flying around, well, then you're going to want to know about the Boyd's algorithm and how that works. And we'll just pull up one running right off the bat. These are all clustered together. I'm going to reset this example and they're all scattered around and they quickly cluster up into small groups, just like you'd imagine flocks of birds. And the thing that started me on this example this last week was three wonderful videos. Um, for one, Dustin did a, a joint thing with Ben Eater and put together a beautiful walkthrough of a simulation of flocking birds on the Boyd's algorithm. Uh, ben loves building computers from scratch, reminds me of my Apple II days, and I've certainly been following Dustin for a long time, and he loves things in nature. Now behind that, another YouTube video that I, a fellow that I really love, um, Grant Sanderson has a wonderful example that kind of expands upon what complex numbers are. And you're going to see that when you start working about things that are moving, with things that have velocity and position, the sooner you start thinking about them in terms of vectors, the easier life's going to be. Now you're going to probably run into a Cartesian graph or plot definitely some point in middle school, elementary school, and you're going to think about them as points with X and Y locations. And that's a great place to start. And, but the sooner you start thinking about things as vectors, you've given yourself a tool to set aside some of the details and start working on things at a higher level. So there's two examples we're gonna go through in the sample today. First, if I've got a lot of Boyds, uh, and that sounds like someone up in the Northeast, and I grew up in Boston, so I appreciate that. Um, it's gonna have a location, and you can think of that as an X comma Y pair as a point. You could also think of that as being an offset from the origin. And if you think of that as being an offset, you're going to think of that as a vector that represents how far that bird is displaced from the origin. And a common numerical scheme called complex numbers um, packs those x and y coordinates and treats them as a single value. And you'll see those sometimes introduced, uh, well, frequently in the math world, it's going to be a plus bi, so this would be 3 plus 5i, i being the imaginary component of it, and that's represented in the y-axis. Now, we're working with Python which is, has a little bit more of its roots in the engineering world, so they use J. There's a reason behind that. It gets into quaternions, and Grant Sanderson has an awesome video related to that that I think he did with Ben Eater as well. So, but to this point, back to the point, we've got a location. It's 3 plus 5 J, and this is its location. But the birds are also going to have velocity, and we're going to be calculating and tweaking their velocities. And so that one, we can look at that as a vector as well. And so that's not relative to the origin, it's relative to the Boyd. So our, and thus we have the offset of minus four plus two in the y-axis, in the imaginary axis. Now, if we're doing a smaller time segments, we just take that velocity and divide it down and we'll be able to make smaller ooches. But when you add the location to the velocity, voila, you simply get the next location. And so I'm adding two points and getting a new location. So the first part is we're learning about addition uh, in the complex plane. So when you'll see the difference is when you look at code, when you start to get into 2D graphics, you're going to tend to see a lot of X and Y coordinate space operations. And in this case, you get X and Y. The first mistake you're going to run into when you're copying and pasting code because the lines look almost the same is you're going to end up with some X's that should be Y's and vice versa. They end up with really funny bugs. But if you jump into vectors, you you don't see the X and Y's nearly as often. So in this case, we just take the location, add the velocity, and we have the new location for the bird. All right, the second point I'm gonna cover on here is absolute value. Uh, no doubt when you start working with X and Y and calculating coordinate space operations, you're gonna end up with a place where, gee, the answer I got was negative, but I really need a positive value here. And there's two ways of looking at that. First, we can take simple values. Absolute value of 5 is 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So there's you know, two values on the number line that'll have the absolute value of 5. There's only two numbers. And it's really easy to just think of that as, well, just strip off the, the negative sign and just give me my answer. So this is the part I want to encourage you to think slightly differently about. Think about it as how far that value is from 0. So the absolute value is sort of the magnitude of the number. This becomes an important part when you begin to look at it in the complex plane. Because now it's not only two points on a number line, it's actually any point 
that is on a circle with circumference or with uh, radius five. So any point on that, any point on that circumference. That means now if we have a point, say that's at x five, y three, it makes a four three triangle or four three five triangle, and you begin to say like, well, wait, this is starting to look like the Pythagorean theorem here, and that's exactly right. So anything that has that distance of five will also have the absolute value of five. So absolute value is now is basically a measure of magnitude or how far something is from zero. So when you start doing collision to testing, hit testing, seeing how, how far things are away from each other, you're going to end up seeing code that looks a little bit like this, where we have um, the Pythagorean theorem here sitting on there. You'll see, hmm, I got a square root, and it looks like I got some squares. You could use a power function, but honestly, just multiplying something by itself is even simpler. Um, and you're probably going to put that in a function. Hopefully you're not copying that code around a lot of places. So in the sample that um, that Ben has for JavaScript, he did it with the X and Y because that's that's sort of native for JavaScript. You certainly They certainly have complex libraries. So I just want to show the comparison of what it's like when you think of the X and Y. You're going to have to break out uh, your distance function and you're going to see lots of sets where you're doing something with the X and something with the Y both. Uh, here we're calculating an average, so we're having to calculate those all up. So the Python port, which is what I'm using for my class, Python has complex numbers built in, and so we're able to use those for vectors. It's not so much, you can see some differences in how the syntax of the language, but this is mostly just looking at what it means to work with vectors versus the explicit X and Y. So all of that distance calculation uh, turns into here. So it's just location of one bird minus the other one, and taking the absolute value of that, which means the magnitude, and seeing if it's close enough. So that's an example of how working with vectors means uh, the code is going to be a little more concise. And a nice thing about this is you're not just learning about a class library that was written, say, in the last 20 years or so. This is actually how numbers on the Cartesian graph were first like in conceptualized by Descartes. So this goes back hundreds of years. And so you're leveraging, you're learning a tool that you will use in multiple fields. So if we go back and look at our little example we had running up here, the scope on there, I'm going to click X. So we have the same functions, but throughout all of our constants are uh, complex numbers. So if I have the margin, like how close it is to the edge, is 0.25 as a vector. And inside here, we're actually taking vectors. In this case, I'm actually doing um, multiplication. So I can rotate something by 90 degrees, by, well, 0, 90 degrees, 180, and 270 degrees. Uh, in the end, then if we just stop and we run that code again. Oh, here we go. There it is. Basically, Ben's, Ben's example to a T, um, but just ported to Python. And in this case, we're running it with, uh, I can start it from random again. Uh, it's designed to work well with the Mu editor. So if you're learning Python and you're 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 new to that, you're in, in the shut-in and you want to learn stuff while you're doing there, Mu editor is a great way to get started with Python. Um, and it it comes bundled with um, Turtle Graphics and comes bundled with Pygame Zero, which is a nice little game work framework to start up with. So again, my hats off to the fellows who did some wonderful videos on this algorithm. Good introduction to complex numbers. Those are in the show notes below. And um, go write some great games. This is Paul Austin with CS Foundations. Thank you all.